Hello and welcome to Das Nostalgia. Emma and Tolina invite you to the wonderful world of MS Das Gaming. And today I'm going to take a look at the second game in Duke Nukem series. The second Duke Nukem game arrived in December of 1993, almost a year and a half after the release of the original game. I am back. The story begins a year after Duke defeated Dr. Proton. He gets kidnapped by aliens who plan to use his brain to take over the world. Of course! In no time, Duke frees himself, and the game begins. The biggest improvements over the original game are obvious. The 256 color VGA graphics are used very effectively. Each level has a very different color scheme. Scrolling backgrounds, foreground objects, and plenty of animations. The action is accompanied by catchy music courtesy of Bobby Prince, whose other music credits include Commander King games, Wolfenstein 3D, Doom 1 and 2, and other great titles. Sound effects mostly consist of explosions and weapon sounds and are not very varied. The enemies are plentiful and come in all shapes and sizes. You got T-800s, some green slime, various alien life forms, machinery, and even birds are out to get Duke. Just like in the first game, enemies blow up into colorful shapes, and the game is full of objects that satisfyingly explode when you shoot them. Once again, there are plenty of bonuses for you to raise your score with, and the treacherous bonus cases with explosives also carried over and are packing much more power this time around. The new features include different weapons, sometimes with a twist, like you can use a flamethrower to fly, for example. Also, on occasion you'll run into a vehicle that you can jump into. But overall it's your usual platformer action. Shoot some enemies, find the key, open the door, shoot some more enemies, and find the exit. Just like the original game, this title was also distributed as shareware. The first episode was free to download, and then you had to pay to get the other three. Each episode has its own theme and a boss at the end. The bosses aren't too inspiring, though. And now, it's nitpicking time. You'd think Duke Nukem 2 would be a great game with all those improvements, but personally I don't enjoy this game as much as the original because of a few things. So here's a quick list of stuff in Duke Nukem 2 that annoys the hell out of me. Number 1. Scrolling First of all, the visible area is not that large because the sprites are gigantic, so you don't get to see too much in any direction, and you're forced to make blind jumps all the time, which is never a good thing in the platformer. Vertical scrolling is weird because it doesn't really adjust when you get close to the edges. Instead, you're expected to adjust it yourself with either up or down keys, and it just feels awkward. Number 2. Enemies some levels are filled with enemies who are very hard to hit, and combined with a small viewing area, this creates many frustrating situations. Like, how was I supposed to avoid that? I had pretty much no time to react and I couldn't kill any of the enemies because they were below my line of fire. Number 3. Unbalanced difficulty. Some of the levels barely have any enemies, while others just try to crush you with numbers. Some levels are very linear, while others are a nightmare to navigate in. There is no pattern, you can spend a couple of minutes blazing through one of the levels, and then an hour trying to find a missing key somewhere in the maze, or keep replaying the same 30 seconds of a level over and over because you just can't handle the number of enemies that's being thrown at you. All those little things make this game less enjoyable to play than its predecessor. And that's very unfortunate because it had all of the potential to be very good, and now it's just an average platformer that sits in between two great games. Yes, I personally think that all those little annoying things distract me from having a good gaming experience in Duke Nukem 2, which is very unfortunate to me because uh, I like the first game a lot. And um, to be honest, by the time the game came out in uh, December, 
uh, I believe the first week of December uh, in '93. Um, the whole world was already caught on a 3D craze, uh, you know, with Wolfenstein 3D, and uh, Doom would actually be released uh, only a week after. So the game arrived kind of late. Uh, by that point, most of the uh, gaming companies moved on to something else other than uh, you know doing uh, shareware platformers. But I know a lot of people who like this game, who enjoy this game a lot. Uh, I mean, I like certain levels. Like some levels uh, really, really feel like an extension of the first Duke Nukem game, where you just run around, you know, blast things away. Uh, uh, you know, nothing is particularly confusing, but to me it's like half the game is like this, and then the other half of the game is filled with frustrating levels. Uh, and, they, and they're just mixed in together, it's not like certain episodes are better than the others, not really, it's just all together in the mix. And to me it's distracting, and that's the reason I don't really, really play that game that often, but I know people who love it, who think it's like the best platformer, PC platformer of all time. I'm not one of them, but I can see why. Um, I mean, uh, I'm nitpicking, but uh, it's a good game overall. Um, and this is it for this episode of Dust Nostalgia. I'm Anatoly, see you next time, and thank you for watching.